Reddit, what's your favorite no fucking way? Story, part two. If you would like more of this content, please like and subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account one. This happened back in my undergrad days on the day of an econ midterm. Because the lecture hall is so large and the class has about 300 students, the professor needs a microphone in order to speak to the class. So he's in front of the class giving his whole speech about the exam. 50 questions, multiple choice. Make sure to write your name on the scantron. Turn it in up here where you're done, etc. Finally, he bids us all good luck and leaves the lecture hall into his office, which is in the adjacent room. Well, he didn't realize that he left his microphone on. So while the entire class is dead silent during this exam, we all listen to the events that unfolded inside his office. We hear the brief, muffled conversation he is having with the female TA of our class. Then the conversation stops, and it becomes painfully evident that they are having sex. The quieted moans of the TA are magnified on the speakers in the lecture hall. The entire class remains dead silent, no one wanting to be the first to make some kind of move. Finally, the professor yells loudly, Oh, fuck! And the microphone abruptly shuts off. Twenty minutes later, the prof walks out into the lecture hall as if nothing happened. He was fired a week later. TLDR professor leaves microphone on during exam, and class listens to him bang his TA in his office. Account 2. Once, waiting in line at a restaurant, I see the guy in front of me. I think I recognize him, but I don't know what from. The entire time I am waiting, I am searching in my brain as to why I knew him. He turns to me and says, Do I know you? We both stood there for a good ten minutes, going through high schools, workplaces, friends, etc., and anything to find out why we knew each other. As far as we could tell, though, there is no reason at all we should have ever met before. But we both clearly recognized each other. To this day, no clue. Account 3. A while ago, my dad and I had a driver pick us up from San Francisco Airport to drive us home. Since there was a lot of traffic, we had a bunch of time to talk and shoot the shit. Turned out that the driver's daughter was the fiancé of my dad's nephew, my cousin, who both live in Cleveland. We attended the wedding a few months later and again reconnected with the driver while there. We started talking some more, and then he introduced us to his wife. Apparently, her and my dad went to the same high school, graduated the same year, and even dated for a few months. This was in a very small suburban town outside of Cleveland's small world indeed. Account 4. The day after I proposed to my wife, we were at the Science Fiction Museum in Seattle, W.A. There is an exhibit that is a giant tumbler full of yellow beads, like thousands of yellow beads. And one black one, it is meant to illustrate the unlikelihood of finding life in the universe. I called her over to tell her how cool it was, and she just points at it casually and says, there's the black one, and she has continued to amaze me every day since. Good times. Account 5. When I was 16, my mom took me to NYC for my birthday. We left on a Wednesday and were flying back Saturday afternoon so I could go to school on Monday, and my mom could watch my baby sister while my stepdad went back to work. On Saturday, we get on the plane. It rolls out of the tarmac. And we sit there for approximately four hours without moving and without an explanation. The plane then took us back to the gate and said they had some protocol that prevented them from keeping us on the tarmac any longer, and the flight was canceled. Eight. Well, my mom and I were freaked out to say the least, as it was pretty imperative that we get home as soon as possible. My poor stepdad is not very self-reliant. All the passengers rushed off the plane and got in a line to figure out alternatives, and my mom and I start bitching about our situation. We mention my baby sister, who has Down syndrome, and the lady behind us in line butts in and says she has a brother with mental retardation as well. This leads to us chatting in line and talking about what bullshit that airline was. After a while, the woman, who was with two friends and her niece, nonchalantly mentions that she has a private jet and was only flying home on that airline to use up frequent flyer miles. She says that she sympathizes with our situation and how would we like to fly home on her private jet early the next morning? 
My mom and I could not even believe. The lady proceeds to pay for us to stay in a nice hotel that night takes us out to dinner and buys us steaks, and flies us home on her private jet the next morning. And that is one of the best things that has ever happened to me. Account 6. More of a big coincidence than anything. First week of college, my junior year, sometime during the day. One day I lose the dongle on my laptop charger. I look everywhere for it and can't find it anywhere. I get back to the room that night, and my roommate asked how my day was. I tell him about losing the dongle and looking everywhere, and he gets this weird look on his face. He looks at me and says, Was it black and about this long, while holding his fingers apart? I tell him yes, but I figure he's just fucking with me. He asked, Did it have a yellow tip with a little white strip attached to it saying HP? I tell him yes, but I still figure he's fucking with me. He looks at me and says, Dude, I'm so sorry. But when I was leaving the cafe this morning, I see this little black thing on the sidewalk. I pick it up and start looking at it, for some reason. And I can't explain why I did it. But as I was passing the dumpster, I just blurt out, sucks for this guy, and throw it right in. He insists he wasn't fucking with me. So we put on some shitty clothes and went dumpster diving. Only took about 20 minutes to find it. Of the 2,000 plus students that attend my university, the person to find it, and like a douche, throw it away, was my roommate. Account 7. Met a pretty girl online, meet her for coffee, I mention my birthday, and she demands to see my license, confused. I comply, turns out we have the same birthday, more chatting, turns out she was drum major in HS and competed against my ex-wife who was a drum major in a school some 600 miles away, and who also had competed against her ex-husband also, her ex-boyfriend was dating my ex-girlfriend, which is like the third time that has happened in this city of one three million. The most implausible part is we're still together almost three years later. Account 8. This was on the news a while back. A guy is engaged to his wife. Before the wedding, they are going through old photos. One of the photos is of the wife when she was a child posing with Mickey Mouse at Disney World. In the background of her photo is the groom and his family when he was a child. Thirty years ago, the photo was taken, and they coincidentally we photographed together when they were children. Account 9. I met a girl at an anime convention in Melbourne, Australia. We got on pretty well as friends, chatted for a while on MSN, and then she decided to move to Ireland. We fell out of contact. About three months after she moved, I found this service that allows you to set up a crude MSN chat, bot, you answer a whole heap of questions about yourself, and then if you set your MSN to away, the bot can hold a rudimentary conversation with anyone trying to speak to you. If someone does try to speak to you while you're away, a transcript is emailed to you. Bots can also chat with other bots, so you can test how well your bot responds to basic questions. One day... I get a transcript in my inbox of a bot chatting to my bot. It starts with, how are you? I am good. What do you enjoy? I like stuff. Yada yada. But a lot of the other bot's phrases seem familiar. And when I check the bot's location, Ireland, I message the bot's owner at Sam. Is that you, Ruskin? What the fuck? Our bots had, somehow. Randomly chosen each other out of the tens of thousands currently active on the site, she eventually moved back to Australia, and that random bot, Convo, was the catalyst for us renewing our friendship. Account 10. I was seven years old playing Pokemon for the first time. My brother was 14 and told me about this game a little more than he speaks to me about Suicune. No fucking idea how to spell that. Sue me and he said that he is constantly moving at every step you take, and that only the luckiest would find him since it was about a 1,000, thousand chance 1-1. One, one. Luckiest? Fuck you. I said, I'm finding him. As soon as this conversation was over, I enter in a battle with little more hope than the average battle. I now had a reason to fight. With a prayer, I looked at the materializing Pokemon, and it wasn't the shape of any grass. Pokemon I knew. My eyes grew wide and my jaw dropped. My brother looked at me and said, What's going on? To which I only replied, No fucking way, I did it. 
I found Suicune. It was, of course, on my screen, and I had the master ball up and ready to catch the bitch, TLDR. I was talking about a very rare thing, and it happened almost instantly. Account 11. A few years ago, I made plans to go see Nine Inch Nails in Massachusetts on their final tour with a friend of mine along with his two friends. We're from NY. On the trip in, the MIA song A Paper Planes comes on, and three of us start singing along, making all the noises obnoxiously, which annoyed the fourth guy, Shane. He tells us that he hates the song, which ended up being bad idea, because my friend found and purchased the single for that song, complete with five remixes. Later that day, we headed into town a couple days early, so there was plenty of annoying Shane with the song, along with making jokes about how maybe if we ask nicely, Trent Reznor will play it at the concert. The day of the concert comes, and as the opening act Street Sweeper Social Club plays their set, the singer announces, this next song isn't on our album, and launches into a cover of, you guessed it, Paper Planes. It took a few moments to sink in because I really couldn't believe that it was actually happening. It was too perfect. Here we had been annoying him obnoxiously for the entire trip with this song, which the rest of us genuinely liked, for the record, only to have the opening act of the concert play it out of nowhere. Account 12. I'm positive this will get buried, but I like telling this anyways. While visiting family in Michigan for our family reunion a few years ago, I live in California. There was a KKK rally in the small town that we were staying in, being a young black teenager semi, flipping shit that there is an actual white supremacist rally going on. I decided to hole up in the grocery store where, coincidentally, six other black people, most likely everyone of color in the town, were camping out as well. I made eye contact with a guy that looked nearly exactly like me, just slightly older. He claimed to be driving through the town because he's on a road trip with his friends from Hialeah, Florida. I told him I was born there and then adopted and moved to California. He was immediately curious about the implications of how this happened, and I told him my biological mother's name and that she was too young to take care of me. So she had me adopted. After he hears this, he pulls out a picture of his mother at her high school prom. I reach for my wallet, numb with incredulity as my fingers pull free the same exact picture of this young woman. We have the same mom. We're long-lost brothers, TLDR. I was stuck in a convenience store during a KKK rally in a random town and found my long-lost brother of 16 years. Account 13 Back in 2006, my brother and I were in Berlin, just dicking around. When these two Russian girls ask out to us in Russian, confused, we replied in English, nothing, then in German, and turns out they just wanted someone to take their picture. We oblige, then get talking and hang out of the rest of the day. After dinner, we say goodbye and part ways. Fast forward to 2010. I'm using live mocha to learn Russian and out of boredom. I click the link to review English submissions. I find one of a girl practicing ordering food in a restaurant. I see the display picture and think, this girl's hot. Click her profile and I'm like, okay, this girl looks really fucking familiar. I sent her a message and we start exchanging this and that. Wouldn't you know it? It's the same fucking girl from Berlin. We got together over the summer in Holland and I think she's the one. Account 14. She was my secret tip savior. I used to deliver food for a local restaurant, and I was the only driver that worked nights. This restaurant gets most of its business from the lunch crowd. It was the day after Thanksgiving, and I was having an especially shitty night week. I had been up to my elbows in deliveries with tipping being a rare thing. It was also looking like I might be about $150 or so short on my rent. I was literally one smart comment away from flipping my shit all over the customers and quitting. Flash forward to one of my last deliveries of the night, and it's an hour past what time I was supposed to be off. The snow is turning into steam as soon as the flakes reach my personal bubble. I walk up to the house, ring the doorbell, and hear the shrieking call of the indigenous eight-year-old boys of Swahili. I curse my luck and try to keep my cool as two young boys run around me in circles shooting each other with toy guns. I remember her smiling at me and mouthing, I'm sorry. I give her the food and she hands me exact change. I curse the gods of the service industry, but just when all hope was lost, I heard one of her little boys asking if he could give me my tip. 
The kid runs off, leaving me standing there in the cold and snow pissed off and hating my life. While the lady tries to make small talk, I try to be nice, but I just want to rip her face off. The little boy shows up with three crisp bills in his tiny hand. I was not amused at this joke. I tell the lady it looks like her boy grabbed the wrong bills. She said, no, she smiled, said. Don't tell anyone, Winked told me. Merry Christmas, and shut the door, leaving me standing out in the cold and feeling sort of like a Jehovah's Witness. I was in a mixed state of shock, happiness, and rage over the fact that I hate when people say Merry Christmas while it's still November. I quietly drove back to the store, took my last delivery, cleaned up, and went home. I mentioned this to no one because I wouldn't let their greedy hands get a share of my rent money. A few weeks later, the same lady orders, and I send a newly hired driver to her house. I got promoted a week after. He comes back with a tip and is flipping shit. I smile because my secret tip lady has a heart of gold. TLDR lady gives me $300 as a tip for a delivery, I tell no one. I make rent with the help of a random stranger whom I never met before. Account 15. My... No fucking way. Story is a more lighthearted one. My fiancé, now husband, and I had talked about getting a pet. Growing up, I had only had cats. As an adult, I am highly allergic to them, so I we decided a dog would be best. I had no idea if I would even like having a dog since I had never even played with one. I read up on caring for dogs and was super stoked that our town was going to have the annual pet expo soon. We went to it, hoping to get some info about breeds, adoption, supplies, etc. The expo turned out to be pretty unhelpful, as most of the vendors were selling dog clothes and treats. As we were leaving, I noticed that there were a couple of booths on the outskirts of the expo that we missed. As we walked toward them, I saw that one had a couple of brownish dogs. The smaller of the two really caught my eye. He was just the most perfect puppy I had ever seen. He was brindled, and his fur looked like a brown tiger pelt, long, graceful legs, a big ruff, and a sharp face and ears like a fox. His big brown eyes were full of intelligence. I talked to the woman running the booth and found out that they were a non-profit rescue organization run solely by volunteers. She informed us that only the larger of the two dogs was available for adoption. I petted the little guy for a bit and left. But I found myself thinking about him a lot over the next few weeks. I hoped I would be able to find one like him when we were ready to adopt. I spent the next few months preparing to get a dog, renegotiating the lease to allow for a pet, getting supplies, researching foods, reading up on health care and first aid. Finally, we were ready to find a dog to adopt. We went to Humane Society and struck out week after week, I just could not find a good match. None of the dogs felt like they would fit our little family. One day, after yet another disappointing day at the Humane Society, I was half-heartedly browsing Craigslist's pet ads when I saw that there was an adoption event a few towns away. We went, expecting to be disappointed. Sure enough, the dogs at the event were not much better. Too energetic, too small, too big, too loud, I gave up and had started walking back to the car when a white van pulled into the parking lot. My husband said we should stick around just in case the van was bringing more dogs. Sure enough, the driver got out and let out a single little brown dog. I immediately started walking toward the van, parked about 100 feet away. My heart knew well before my brain could register that I recognized that dog. As I walked faster and faster to the van, I remembered where I had seen him before. I shouted to my husband, it's him, it's my dog. It turns out that he was the dog from the expo and the last of his litter to find a home. No one else wanted him because he was shy and looked unusual. I thought he was beautiful. Within the hour, he was buckled up in the back seat in his doggy seatbelt on his way to his new home. <laughs>